Hello everybody, we're going to take a look at Manifold Future. As they say, don't just think about the future, be there. We're here at the product downloads page for uh, Radian and Manifold System and we're going to download from right here, Manifold Future. We'll click that knob, that button, and uh, when the download is done we're going to have a uh, zip file like this one right here, Manifold Future. And we're going to uh, unzip that. I'm going to use 7-zip, extract here. It unzips very quickly. This is the so-called portable installation. Now to complete the portable installation, uh, back here in the uh, downloads page, I also downloaded this bit right here, DLLs for popular open source DBMS packages. I like to download those so then I can uh, work with gpackage and uh, postsql and postgs and other third party such packages. I'm going to copy this extension DLLs package, copy, and then here in the unzip manifold future tree, bin 64 is a 64-bit executable. Bin is the 32-bit executable. Let's go into bin 64, and here I'll paste the extension DLLs. So now we're all set to go with third-party uh, uh, open source databases and all that other cool stuff. So let's double-click Manifold EXE to launch Manifold Future. The splash screen changes. I'm going to resize this so that it fits within the uh, bounds of the uh, screen that we're uh, videoing, that for the, the, the video that we're using. And let's start by opening a uh, drawing that I created earlier. File Open, and we'll open this one which has Buildings in Monaco. Click Open the Map, and I'll right-click on Buildings here and choose a Zoom. And that'll zoom us into that uh, drawing which shows Buildings in Monaco that were taken from the an extraction from the OpenStreetMap database. I'll zoom a little bit further here. Terrific. Now what's cool about Future is Manifold Future is uh, uh, basically the beta test program that uh, is uh, moving Radian into uh, Manifold System Release 9. It's already so stable that virtually everybody that has a Radian license will use Manifold Future. And uh, Manifold Viewer tracks this, so whenever you're using Manifold Viewer, if you're downloading the latest portable build, uh, so-called Future Viewer, you're using this uh, product as well. Uh, there's a lot of innovations here. For example, in the Contents pane, uh, we can uh, click on these various uh, elements. Or we can do it more quickly by right-clicking, and a right-click automatically shifts the uh, next one in turn. So we don't have to move the uh, mouse cursor away from this uh, central action place. Here's the Layers pane. And uh, what can we do with the layers? We can turn layers off and on. Let's turn off the background layer, which is Bing Maps. Uh, let's turn off the buildings. Turn the buildings back on. Turn Bing Maps on and off. The background is uh, a layer of uh, plain color that fills the entire background of the image. If we turn it off, we see this uh, checkerbox pattern that shows transparent coloring, that shows that the layer is transparent. Uh, we can change the color of the background, double-click into the color well, and uh, this is a classic kind of uh, typically goofy uh, Windows color picker program, and there you go, there's the uh, color well. Uh, back here in the uh, project pane, let's click uh, Bing Maps back on, we can uh, with the Focus on the Buildings tab, we can alt-click to get a readout. And uh, that's what the record component of the uh, project pane, of uh, the contents pane does. Uh, anytime we click here, it automatically switches in. This gives us layers. This gives us the overall setting of the uh, map and the layers in the map. The uh, layers uh, pane gives us uh, a setting of all the pair, la layers. And record gives us record values. So whenever we click on here, it's a readout. For example, that's the, that's the Fairmont. This is the Auditorium Rainier III, the third. Uh, that's the Monte Carlo Star, a residential office building, a residential building. And that's the Yacht Club de Monaco, a very cool Yacht Club. Uh, here you see two little buttons uh, left and right. That's previous and next. So if we choose a, something like this building here, uh, we can go to the previous record or the step through to the next record. Depending whether our records in, are in order in the uh, table from which they appear, that may make sense. It may not make sense. We, we don't really know. It's okay. Uh, now let's uh, use, uh, let's add a data source because one of the other cool things we have here is uh, new favorite data sources which automatically include Bing Maps, Bing Satellite, Google Maps, Google Satellite, and the OpenStreetMaps base map. Let's add a Bing Maps satellite layer. So if we like, uh, what we can do is we can just drag and drop that into the scene. And now we've added a Bing Maps satellite layer. That's a very, very convenient thing to do. Notice that it automatically switched when we added the layer into uh, the project pane where we uh, might want to use it. Uh, let's uh, switch back here to the contents pane and let's look at how we can use opacity. 
opacity is the setting right here. So each layer has an opacity setting. 50% means it's 50% opaque, 50% translate, 50% transparent. You can see that's what that looks like as opposed to 100%. We can see some of the background come through uh, the images of the building. Uh, the layers pane also allows us to select more than one layer. And any setting that we do in the opacity, let's say we change it to 51%, will automatically apply to all the layers. So now, as you can see, we have an effect where the buildings are 50% opaque and the uh, satellite layer is 50% okay, opaque. So we're seeing some of the Bing street map image through that satellite layer. If we want to make these both 100% opaque, we just click that 100, set it to 100, and now both are 100% opaque. So that's uh, zero, trans zero transparency. Uh, let's learn how we can add to favorites. And uh, to add to favorites, we have to be here with the focus on the project where it's not some sort of read-only image server. Uh, let's click File, Create, New Favorite Data Source, and here let's click Edit Favorites. One of the nicest things about this New Favorites dialog is that we can very easily add favorites that we can later reuse. To do that, we click here to the Add button, and let's add a data source. Let's call this REST, and this can be any of the data sources of any of the zillions of different types of data sources that uh, uh, Manifold uh, Future uh, understands. For example, it could be an image server, it could be a something else. What we're going to do is we're, we're going to open up a file, a manifold file. We're going to link in a manifold file that we previously created. And the source of that is going to be uh, up here in a, in, a, in a folder called Archives. And this is a map, uh, that a project that contains many ArcGIS REST servers. We're going to click that open. We're going to open that as read-write because we're going to leave that as an archival source. I'm going to add it as a favorite data source. Great, and now you can see this appears here. Let's move it to the top of the stack where it'll be easier for us to uh, define. Click OK. And now whenever we want to use that uh, new favorite data source, we can, we can add it just by one click, just like that. And there it is, the new data source appeared. We can expand the data source and we can see that there's zillions and zillions of different maps here. Let's turn off the uh, satellite map. And uh, here, let's uh, drag and drop, say, the, oh, let's drag the uh, canvas world dark gray base map. Click that in here. And that's the canvas world map. You may have s remember seeing this from the uh, uh, Radian website as it's used as an illustration on the Radian website. Uh, we can use any of these other servers that we want. For example, here's the Esri World Imagery, which Esri has just very generously made available for use for anybody that wants to uh, do non-commercial things. For example, such as uh, edit uh, OpenStreetMap or whatever. Let's drag and drop that into there. It's not the fastest server on the planet, but it's a pretty cool one. It's a different uh, set of satellite imagery. So if you don't want to use Bing, but you want to use Esri, you can you can do that. And uh, there's very many different uh, image servers that uh, you can use. All right, so we've learned how to use the uh, favorites pane. We've learned how to uh, learn use the contents pane. By the way, if we want to invert this, Control A, Control I is deselect everything. Uh, we've learned how to use the records pane. Let's go back to, here's the Yacht Club de Monaco. Oops, click on the buildings pane. Uh, and uh, let's take a look at a realistic use of opacity besides, besides just what we did for the demo. I'm going to open one more project here. File, open, and I'm going to open this one here. Do I want to save changes? Nah, we already have that. And this is one of the examples that's in the uh, user manual going to open a map and what this is, I'm going to zoom to this elevation raster. This is an example of importing a, a DEM for in DDF SDTS federal government format from USGS. And that's been uh, formatted with the palette. Uh, if we like, we can click into the contents pane, click records, and let's change the opacity of this from 100% to 50%. So it'll get a better transition here to the uh, compared to the Google terrain that's next to it. As you can see, the artificial hill shading that uh, Radian does is extremely accurate. I mean, it's very good compared to, and blends very well with, say, the use of the Google terrain shading, where you can see here in this region how Google terrain shading blends kind of effortlessly with the uh, uh, automatic hill shading that uh, uh, Manifold Future does in the uh, terrain elevation data set. What we're looking at here is the uh, eastern portion of the Livermore Valley in uh, uh, California. Here's Altamont Pass, which is full of uh, uh, windmills. Here's the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory. That's one of America's two nuclear weapons labs. And uh, there you go. That's uh, how you can do opacity. So 
I hope you've enjoyed this very first part of a tour of Manifold Future. When you download and work with Manifold Viewer or you work with uh, Radian, I encourage you to download the Future. Yes, technically it's a beta, but don't let that scare you off. It's an extremely stable product. Uh, it is uh, superbly powerful, and it introduces many, many new features with many more coming every week. So thank you much for watching, and goodbye from Manifold Land. Well, that was fun. Uh, if you want to see more, visit us at www.manifold.net. Uh, as always, Manifold delivers the world's most advanced, highest quality spatial products for GIS and DBMS at a low price that you can afford. Once again, that's uh, manifold.net. See you soon.